The oil bulls are back, which was a huge turnaround from last week from recession fears to JP Morgan Chase analysts saying that we might have $380 oil and OPEC lacks additional spare capacity. China's economy is reopening. The IEA, Information Energy Administration, expects oil demand to rise more than 2% to a record-breaking 101.6 million barrel a day demand. The Strategic Petroleum Reserve reached the lowest level since 1985 to 497 million barrels of oil, and we're expected to stop producing the million barrel a day release uh, here in the next uh, 30 to something days. Uh, Libya oil production has collapsed from 1.2 million barrels a day down to 100,000 barrels of oil a day. Uh, France uh, FOS refinery halted due to strikes, also affecting Norway's offshore production. I'm Sean Pruitt, president of Kingdom Exploration. I read all about oil and gas news, so you don't have to. So if you like this channel, please subscribe if you're interested in oil and gas. Uh, I'd love to have you on my channel. Uh, right now, oil prices are $108 per a barrel. Uh, Brent crude $111 per a barrel. Uh, supply disruptions drive bullish sediment in oil markets. Um, operations at France's FOS refinery were halted by strikes, and Norway's offshore production was heavily impacted by them as well. It seems the oil market is under siege from all sides, from fundamental tightness to underinvestment, disruptions related to the war in Ukraine, and now strikes, okay? And so they just recently had a G7 uh, OPEC uh, meeting, and OPEC Plus agreed to maintain 648,000 barrels a day increase in its production target for August, keeping its commitment unchanged despite increasing evidence. That spare capacity within the oil group has thinned to its lowest level in years. So they have yet to be able to stick to the agreements. They are producing less oil than what they're stating they can. And so there's the, the, the sediment is you guys are lying to us. You do not have the ability to produce as much oil you're stating, and there is no spare capacity or at the level that you say it is. Uh, JP Morgan sees stratospheric $380 oil on worst case Russian cut. Global oil prices could reach a stratospheric $380 barrel if U.S. and European penalties prompt Russia to inflict retaliatory crude output cuts. J.P. Morgan Chase and company analysts warn the group of seven nations are hammering out complicated mechanism to cap the price fetched by Russian oil in a bid to tighten the screws of Vladimir Putin's war machine in Ukraine. But given Moscow's robust physical position, the nation can afford to slash daily crude production by 5 million barrels without excessively damaging the economy. J.P. Morgan analysts, including Natasha Keneva, wrote in a note to clients. For much of the rest of the world, however, the results could be disastrous. A 3 million barrel cut to daily supplies would push benchmark London crude prices to $190 per barrel, while the worst-case scenario of 5 million could mean stratospheric $380 oil, the analyst wrote. The most obvious and likely risk with a price cap is that Russia might choose not to participate and instead retaliate by reducing exports. The analyst wrote, it is likely that the government could retaliate by cutting output as a way to inflict pain on the West. The tightness of global oil market is on Russia's side. Now, here's the deal. We put sanctions on Russia, and they've been able to evade a lot of the sanctions selling to India and what have you by lowering their oil price. Of course, it, why not save hundreds of millions of dollars by doing business with Russia, okay? But if they control their prices, well, why would I buy from you when I could buy the same crude oil and, and not break the sanctions and not put egg on our face and do business with America, do business with Saudi Arabia, okay? And so if they put a price cap, it will be able to control Russian oil. Now, their retaliation, which is uh, an arrow in their in Russian quiver, that if they were to just all of a sudden shut down 5 million barrels a day, it would cause oil prices to go over $300 a barrel. Russia 
has that option and they're keeping this uh, uh, arrow in their quiver and they could use it at any moment that this control of prices could potentially push them over the fence to make this happen okay and i i honestly wouldn't surprise do i think we'll see 380 dollar oil i seriously doubt it uh putin is a very smart man he doesn't want to um destroy his economy okay he's doing this to stay empowered he's doing this to multiply and prosper his country he doesn't want to go down as a broke king okay uh and so if he was to uh, reduce oil output at that capacity, it would destroy the world economy. Okay, period. And so it's a balancing act. OPEC plus is a balancing act. And so they don't want to destroy the economy, but they want oil prices to be as high as possible while the economy still continues. Okay. And if they had their way, they would make oil prices $200 a barrel. Uh, we're going to watch this uh, video here and I'll weigh in on it. Right now, joining us is uh, Halima Croft, RBC Capital Markets Global Head of Commodity uh, Strategy. Halima, great to see you. Thank you for having me on. Um, it, it sounds like it is not expected for OPEC Plus to do anything with their production targets. Is there any hope for President Biden that he gets Saudi uh, and or UAE to increase their, their production? I mean, the real hope for the Biden administration is when they make that visit to the kingdom in the middle of July, that the Saudis and the Emiratis agree to essentially go beyond what OPEC is doing and add more barrels back to the market. We do not have a lot of additional OPEC oil out there. We had French President Macron doing his hot mic take to Biden this week, essentially saying that OPEC is out. Now, we think the Saudis in the near term could potentially add about an additional million barrels. But again, Again, we're facing the prospect of losing significant Russian quantities when those European sanctions kick in in January. And we have other countries like Libya experiencing disruption. So there's simply not a lot of additional OPEC oil out there. So the sanctions are coming on Russia, and so they're going to be kicking in very soon. And and but here's the thing: I mean, the 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 Russian prime, uh, sorry, the 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 France prime minister or president uh, came up to. Joe Biden and said, hey, uh, from a very reliable source, uh, Saudi Arabia does not have a million barrel a day spare capacity. They only have 150,000. Now, whether that's true or not, when you talk to a president of the most powerful country in the world, you don't just say whatever comes to mind, okay? Because the whole, the whole world heard that, and he's either going to look like a complete idiot or uh, he's correct. But either way, whether there's only whether there's only 150,000 barrels a day of spare capacity or a million, at some point we're going to reach it. At some point we're going to find out that truth. And so the markets, the markets are priced based upon there being an additional two to three million barrels a day of spare capacity, and that America could increase oil output. But here's the problem. U.S. Shell is the most expensive barrel of oil to produce. It's the fastest declining barrel of oil, and it is the source rock, meaning that's where all of the conventional oil came from. All that source rock, that oil floated up to the top. We're, 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 we're going after the last bit of reserves. And so the reason why oil prices are going up is simply because of supply and demand. The markets are tightening, and people are starting to see, wow, maybe this green tech can't save us because we we should have been at least 20 percent efficient from uh green tech i mean we're nowhere near that we're still our demand for oil is growing i mean we should be at an 80 million barrel a day demand but instead oil prices uh, oil demand continues to rise i mean they're estimating over 101 barrels a day demand and so oil demand is increasing Oil production is decreasing. Spare capacity is decreasing. Look, guys, we haven't made any major discoveries in a long time. Houston, we have a problem. Uh, here's another video I'd like for you guys to watch. You know, the Supreme Court ruling that the EPA overreached, that it cannot adopt on its own this sweeping regulatory scheme started under the Obama White House to push the U.S. power grid away from fossil fuels toward wind and energy, uh, wind energy and solar energy. But Congressman, the Biden White House is still pushing the Biden climate agenda through the Clean Air Act. 
uh, Texas Governor Greg Abbott, he's in a new and major fight. Biden's EPA wants to crack down on the nation's biggest oil field, the Permian Basin in Texas, claiming it's violating ozone pollution standards. That's a quarter of America's gas supply and 40 percent of our oil. This administration's war on U.S. energy is exactly what's driving up the prices for every American whenever they pull into the gas pump. The fact that they're now trying to wage a regulatory war on an area in the United States that produces 40% of our gasoline is unacceptable. Apparently, this administration would rather be reliant on Saudi Arabia, Venezuela, or other countries rather, rather than our own U.S. oil supply. It's unacceptable. He should travel less than 1,000 miles to Midland, Texas, rather than going to Saudi Arabia when you're talking about producing more oil. And, you know, Congressman, the Permian Basin is one of the nation's biggest employers. Nearly 100,000 workers there, plus it supports thousands of workers in towns near it. Let's watch climate advisor Gina McCarthy brag about the fossil fuel sector losing jobs under President Biden. Watch. We just had a, a recent report that was put out that's showing all of the energy and the employment stats from last year. Clean energy is winning. Fossil fuels losing jobs. Who cares? What do you say? Liz, this administration and everyone who works for him is completely out of touch with reality. But you know what? They're doing exactly what they campaigned on. Joe Biden, when he was campaigning for president, he said, I re look into my eyes. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, I will eliminate fossil fuels. That's what he said when he was running for office. And that's, in fact, what his administration is trying to do. Their, their belief is increase gas so then everyone can you know drive an electric car but guess what buying a sixty thousand dollar electric car in southeast missouri isn't quite easy whenever people's median income household is forty thousand dollars for a family of four they're out of touch with real americans and congressman russia's vladimir putin is probably applauding this today the president said over in europe today that we will all have to pay for high gas as long as it takes in order to defeat russia you know, Putin wants high oil to pay for his war in Ukraine. This is Biden's price hike, not Putin's. Let's take a listen. Watch. I can understand why the American people are frustrated because of inflation. But inflation is higher in almost every other country. Prices of the pump are higher in almost every other country. We're better positioned to deal with this than anyone, but we have a way to go. Ultimately, the reason why gas prices are up is because of Russia. Russia, Russia, Russia. How long is it fair to expect American drivers and drivers around the world to pay that premium for this war? As long as it takes. So Russia cannot, in fact, defeat Ukraine and move beyond Ukraine. Here's the deal. Biden is using Russia as an excuse for high energy prices. And what he's not telling you is that, listen, here's our only option. This, If he was being honest, he'd say, listen, okay, the Green New Deal is not working, guys. And we blew trillions of dollars on an idea that didn't work. And the truth is fossil fuels is our only option. And we have to go begging to OPEC for oil. And our only option is reducing demand. And allowing high energy prices to take care of itself. That, that is their plan. I'm, I'm sure if they had a solution, they would have done it already. But the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, which is an, an emergency reserve we save for emergencies. Emergencies. Guys, we are in an emergency energy situation. The, the SPR is at the lowest level since 1980s, okay? I mean, Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia, uh, uh, OPEC target is 275,000 barrels of oil, but only hit 20,000 barrels of oil last month, okay? So their, their target was to increase 275,000 barrels of oil, but they were only able to increase by 20,000. OPEC plus is 2.7 million barrel per day lower than they should be right now.
due to Western sanctions on Russia and capacity constraints at several other producers. Okay, two. I mean, 2.7 million barrels a day. Listen, they they don't have the spare capacity, guys. And Biden is traveling around the world. He's going to Saudi Arabia saying, oh, I'm not going to ask them to produce more oil. Well, that's an indirect way of making it seem, oh, it's not about oil. But the truth is he is desperate. And why would he ask somebody to increase the output when they don't have the spare capacity? They might already even know the truth. And maybe, maybe they are trying to keep the world from freaking out about energy, empowering Russia even more, empowering Putin even more. Because they're, they, I mean, Saudi Arabia, they have information they're not going to tell Russia or America. So, so does America. And they, they keep this. Information is, is very important. It's, 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 it's a weapon. But if the world knew the truth about energy, that we don't have enough oil, oil prices would skyrocket and the economy would be hit pretty hard. And so they're doing whatever they can to keep a tight lid on this information because if they release it to the world, gas prices are going to skyrocket and, and it's they're already too expensive right now, okay? But their only option at this point is allow gas prices to reduce demand and potentially causing energy prices to come down, giving them time to kick this can down the road with the next president to deal with this energy problem because they have so much mud on their face. They, they, they know this green tech isn't working. There's nothing more combustible than oil and gas. Uh, uh, let's see. Analysts hike oil price forecasts as supply concerns intensify. Uh, the experts polled by Reuters Expect global oil demand to continue growing this year with responses ranging from a growth of 2.3 million barrels a day to 5 million barrels a day in 2022 compared to 2021. Next year, growth is expected to continue uh, at around 2 to 2.3 million barrels a day, according to analysts. Many analysts also pointed out that OPEC Plus is producing below its targets and is unlikely to start hitting those targets as several producers, especially OPEC's African members, Struggle with lack of capacity or investment. Dwindling spare capacity was also cited as a sign of tight market. So everyone is saying the same thing. Um, Riyadh in Saudi Arabia, the global oil demand is expected to witness a 1.9% quarter-on-quarter growth to 100.6 million barrels per day in the third quarter of 2022. Okay, so uh, King Abu Dhabi. Uh, Petroleum Studies and Research Center said that. So there's many analysts saying that, hey, demand isn't dropping, it's increasing. I mean, what is the green energy deal, new deal actually doing? Um, And so this was an interesting article because a lot of people are concerned about recession. A lot of people are concerned that uh, oil prices could tank. And so there's a lot of information and analysts and uh, business strategists that is talking about um, oil will not be that greatly affected. Okay. So strategists at ANZ bank see solid support at a hundred dollar level, uh, in the event that, uh, uh, we hit a, a major recession. Okay. And so previous recessions have seen oil demand fall by zero to 3% peak to, to trough, but that would still not be enough to offset the supply side, uh, disruptions for the moment. Oil demand is improving. Traffic numbers remain strong despite high prices in Europe, and the U.S. congestion is also rising in China as restrictions ease. Combined with ongoing supply-side issues, we expect inventories to continue to fall in 2023. This should support upside moves, okay? And so we're all expecting supplies uh, to drop, obviously. So here's uh, here's a uh, chart here for oil and gas demand. So 2006, we were our demand was 85.3 million barrels a day. Okay, and so we rose all the way. Now here's uh, this is because of COVID. We dropped down to 91 barrels a, a day. 2021, 96.5 million barrels a day. 2022, 99.4 million, and they're estimating 2023 to be at 101.2 million barrels a day. 
103.2 by 2025. I mean, where are we going to get this additional oil? I mean, the spare capacity isn't there. And we are, we're still under investment. And, and, and even though that the Supreme Court is coming against the SPR, trying to prevent them from uh, destroying the oil and gas industry, um, under the Clear Energy Act, the Clean Energy Act, they are still attacking uh, massive basins like the uh, Permian Basin, okay? I mean, they are destroying the oil and gas industry on purpose, and I don't get it. I don't understand the Biden administration. I don't understand their tactics here. I don't know what the Biden administration is thinking, okay? If I was the president of the United States it would be drill, baby, drill. I mean, take the power out of Russian hands. Take the power out of Saudi hands. I mean, they are in control right now. If Russia stopped producing oil today, it would destroy the world economy. He has that arrow in his quiver. And at any point, he can strike. I mean, if, if I mean, because Biden is getting together with world leaders and they're trying to cap their russian oil prices if they do that they run a major risk that russian will not comply and they will cut the world off from their oil causing oil prices to skyrocket and they could sell half the oil and make just as much money because they they save money on shipping fees i mean would you rather ship three million barrels a day or or ten and the shipping cost and the cost of producing uh, is extremely high. And so now you sell half the oil for uh, a much higher price, you're almost making the same kind of profits. And so it wouldn't be that big of a deal for Russia to do that, okay? They would continue uh, to, to prosper. All right, guys, I'm Sean Pruitt, president of Kingdom Exploration. If you, if you uh, like this channel, please subscribe, and we'll talk soon. Thanks.